Hey, good morning, everyone. I wanted to share probably one of the most important healing of the book messages. In fact, this will probably take two or three um, for people really interested in what the original Hebrew and Greek um, word pictures uh, really mean in the scriptures and uh, um, what a difference it makes when you actually when you actually read them in the original word pictures. And so, um, you know, in the times where it seems crazy, um, you know, in Matthew, it talks about wars and rumors of wars and we'll address, <laughs> we'll address all of that and, uh, um, and show you that, uh, all the war verses, there's over 300 in the, um, old Testament alone have been interpreted as God commanding his people to go to war and destroy or consume their enemies. <clears throat> but I'll show you, they're not talking about defeating or annihilating other people or nations. Unconditional love doesn't conceive of that. And so uh, we've almost lost that completely. Almost every pastor minister I know is convinced that's a, that uh, uh, God is a God of war. And in the end, the consummation of the world uh, um, is this all out battle as if God has to conquer through uh, violence versus if God is love and we can measurably show that when people experience peace and love in their own hearts and minds, it actually extends to everyone and everything around them. It actually is the solution. So wouldn't it make sense, more sense that uh, the end is the consummation of love covenant versus a, constant, uh, a consummation of war? And so I'll show you that. The root word for war is lakam which literally means gathering together, united together, fitting together, and uh, consuming or consummating the covenant meal. Now, we've translated as the all-consuming, the devourer. Um, these verses are not talking about devouring enemies, like I said, which never fits unconditional love. This, they're actually talking about the assurance of everybody that they will experience the Last Supper, the um, the evening meal, there was the morning meal, the evening meal, the morning sacrifice, the evening sacrifice. And these are the two seeds of life, guys. <clears throat> so when the, when the sun is about to set on your life, the evening sacrifice, the 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 last supper is in the upper room right here. And uh, uh, it's 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 God's assurance that everyone will feed on this lap supper and experience the last covenant of love, which leads to eternal life and rest. The, the rest that remains, the shalom. And I'll actually go through the word pictures of Greek and Hebrew um, uh, pretty extensively with you to show you that they're there. And like I said, uh, <laughs> if you already kind of know, um, hey, I know God's love and everything's okay, despite with the craziness going on, um, <clears throat> you can go straight there. You can just straight to, uh, hey, stay in that emotion of of love and peace where everything's okay and life becomes pretty good. It's you, you live a very good life. This is really for a lot of the Christians that are spiritual warriors, the Bible studiers um, that uh, have taken this idea. The Bible clearly says just because pastors, rabbis, uh, preachers have said, this is what it says for thousands of years and uh, never really challenged. Wait a minute. Why, why can we see that love, and uh, when people experience peace, it actually brings love and peace and abundance and health to their life. Why does that work when scriptures often say almost the exact opposite? And uh, that's why I went on the journey myself, because it didn't make sense. You know, and uh, as crazy as, as life is, as I'm, I'm looking out here at the mountains and the sun comes up, guys, the, the planet and the suns and the earth are in perfect order and harmony. <clears throat> um the birds are chirping, the seeds still, fl the flowers are still flowering and blooming, you know, the, the sun's going to come, and uh, in the spring, I'm sorry, the, the rain and the snow is going to come in the spring, everything bursts forth with new life, almost to tell us that the perfect, uh, the, how the world truly is, is not this fallen idea that we've been peddled for thousands of years, is, uh, uh, <clears throat> that the true nature and order of everything is love and harmony. It's almost like, I don't care how crazy you get, everything goes on in harmony. It's really our hearts and minds that are out of harmony, I promise you. So anyway, um, I wanted to show you that because uh, if we're truly interested in peace in the Middle East, um, which I am in not just the Middle East, for everybody. And, uh, and the only way to do that, as we've seen, 
is to let go of, of any feelings that are not unloving. And then the natural part of you, uh, you know, Rhonda Burns, I'll read this. She calls it the atomic power of love and peace, which are the true nature of every human being on the planet, uh, start to take over. They naturally express themselves. And what's really wild, as I showed you with Greg Braden, is they've they can statistically measure it. It doesn't take that many people. The square root of 1% of the people affects that. So 100 people that experience peace in their own body, not praying to a God out there begging this God um, with, the, with the image of holding war in their head to bring uh, peace is not bring peace. When you, when people, when a hundred people experience peace in their own body, letting go of all unloving feelings that they're highly charged about, especially right now, guys, with war, with terror. Um, and I would just tell you, uh, there's no way people create these atrocities that you're seeing right now. I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, um, I'm not, I'm not just washing over any of that. I'm interested in where did this come from? Because you have to quite literally be mentally ill. You have to be fed things that are not true about who they are and God for you to have that much anger and hatred um, to go do that to other human beings. It's not natural, guys. <clears throat> and so anyway, let me just cover this again, because uh, I think this is really interesting. This is, um, um, you know, this is from chapter seven and eight of The Greatest Secret. And uh, then we'll go through the scriptures because we these this is the answer of things, guys. This is where all the testimonies come in with this ministry. When and uh, this is probably the easiest way I've seen for people to really turn around everything in their life, which is experiencing uh, peace, gratitude, love in their own heart. Then everything starts to work. And she says uh, she says this in, in chapter seven. <clears throat> um, basically, that to free yourself of negative feelings is not to deny they're there. Um, the worst thing you can do is, is be a spiritual warrior and start binding and loosing and and holding <laughs> holding warring, battling in your mind. Guess what? We're divinely creative beings. We create more battle and war. As soon as people experience peace, all of that goes away. She says, quite simply, when you <clears throat> when you welcome any negative negative, you experience you allow it to be there, you experience it and just acknowledge it. It's okay for it to be there. You allow it to dissolve back into its source. So when you welcome any negative feeling, you're tapping into your infinite power, the true you guys, which is the love and presence of God within you, dissolve it. <clears throat> and then she says, well, if you're willing to do that versus what everybody else does is fight, become angry, um, hold, hold, uh, uh, hold negative things in your heart about people, nations, the religions. She says, once those negative feelings are gone, you won't be affected by them the way you once were. Here's the icing on the cake, guys. Your health will skyrocket. Your finances, your relationships, your entire life skyrockets. Even better, all of those negative feelings are gone. You won't be standing unimpeded in the joy and happiness. You will be standing in the joy and happiness. She says infinite awareness. You could just say the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Whatever you want will appear effortlessly in your life. And she she basically says when you do that, you let go of the atomic uh, power of love. Now, I wanted to share this part with you too. Um, how do you welcome feelings and subjects that you have a strong opinion about or strong stance against? And she writes like cruelty to animals. How about cruelty to people? And uh, that ev ev evokes a really strong uh, emotion in people. But here's the here's the wild part: is we project out what we feel within and create more of it. So if we, if we hold those really strong negative reactions uh, about things that are going on in the world, we actually empower that and create more of it. Understand that the bad feelings you have around the subject are causing you harm and not helping what you care about. See, are we really interested in, in, in uh, peace in the Middle East or are we more interested in um, our God beats your God in your book? <clears throat> See, I'm interested in actually experiencing people having experiencing peace. So she says this, you might, I wrote in my notes, how to make a true difference. <clears throat> you might think that you don't want to stop feeling the pain about a subject because you'll stop caring about it. This is your strong resistance to a subject energizing it. It adds a lot of energy and power and only makes the problem bigger. When you release those negative feelings around it, you release all the energy you have focused on it. You disempower the circumstances surrounding the subject. Without that negative emotion, your love and compassion, I would say that's the true nature of every human being that's ever been created, 
which will naturally rise in place of the negative emotions. It has atomic power. It makes a huge difference in the world. I just wrote in my notes again, everything that is not love dissolves when you love. The problem literally goes away. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the challenge. If we if we read all these verses, in fact, like I said, there's over 300 that we see God of war in the Old Testament alone. And if and in the New Testament, where we, we see in Matthew wars and rumors of wars, and then the, the great end time battle in Revelation, if we think the end is going to be a battle, guess what we create? We're divinely creative. We create more battle. We become a self-fulfilling prophecy, guys. Doesn't it make more sense that the God of love would finish or consummate the last covenant or a covenant of love. And I'll show you that's what the word pictures actually say, uh, both in Matthew and, and uh, um, Matthew and Revelation and all the New Testaments. That's, that's why I said it'll probably take two or three messages. Excuse me. And so anyway, um, how when she says, uh, you have atomic power that makes a huge difference in the world. This is what's so great, guys we basically have three of the major religions in the Middle East um, mistranslating, under, misunderstanding <clears throat> um, the original word pictures. And they're all insisting that uh, uh, the promised land is literally a piece of dirt versus if you go look up land, it's haaretz. In, in Hebrew, it's earth, which means firmness. We will experience the firmness of God is what it says. Anyway, so but they're convinced that uh, that special piece of dirt is what all the three religions are after, and there's going to be a great battle to go get it. I just say it's not there. It's literally not there. It's not talking about that. <clears throat> and so I would just say, is it working? Is it really bringing more more peace if we're really interested in? I don't think it is, guys, because this this was uh, the International Peace Project in the Middle East, published in the Journal of Conflict Resolution in 1998. Or 1988, sorry. This was again during over Israel. During the Israel-Lebanese War of the early 1980s, practitioners were trained in the practice to create peace in their own bodies. How do you experience peace in your own body? The easiest way, as we've been sharing with you, is like the book Love Yourself or or The Greatest Secret, chapters of seven and eight. There's a seven and eight. There's a lot. You know, Dispenza teaches this. And, and guys, wouldn't we be interested in when they help people experience peace and love and let go of all the negative emotion in their own bodies, that's the key. It's all about energy. It's letting go of the negative emotion in your body, not praying to a God. <clears throat> and a lot of you guys, you need to let go of the negative emotion before you try visualize. If you just try visualize without dealing with the energy, um, you're just going to get frustrated because the material world responds to the field, the energy. So anyway, <clears throat> they create, they learn how to experience peace and love in their own body. And rather than, simply thinking about it in their mind. See, that's that's what creative visualization is, which is powerful. But if you only do it in your mind, but you're not focused on creating the peace within your heart area, your internals, it really doesn't work very well. <clears throat> and thinking about it in their minds or praying for it to an occur. That's what most Christians, uh, Muslims, basically the whole world that doesn't understand the divinity of man. And so that's what's really cool is a uh, hundred people can bring peace literally to their to other people as well as to a region to the world uh they can bring peace and, and love and harmony and to a whole region of a million people the square root of one percent of who you're trying to affect and they can measure it guys that's what's so great that's why i love the science behind it because we don't have to go take it by faith we can go no we can reproduce it over and over and over and over it's measurable well doesn't it make sense that how the world actually runs and works uh the scriptures, if they're if they're truly de- inspired, would talk about that, and that's what I'm trying to show you. They do. They don't talk about this warring God that you're reading about. <clears throat> anyway, so it literally says uh, terror goes down, crimes against people, emergency room uh, accidents, literally the number of car accidents, train accidents, all goes down. It goes back into the natural harmony. All right, <clears throat> so let's get into this. Let's go to. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, what the word pictures actually say. <clears throat> so the, in the Old Testament, uh, to battle or war is Milkama. And so if you go look at this, um, 
the first time it uh, the first time it appears is in Genesis 14 too. So we'll start there. That would be a good one. But uh, here's what I want to show you just as we even get going um, to battle to war. <clears throat> and if you go down here, you know, that's how it was all translated to battle uh, fighting warrior from Lacham in the sense of fighting a battle, the engagement. It doesn't have to be a battle that's negative. It's an engagement. Now, let me show you. It's from the Hebrew, lakam. And where does that come from? <clears throat> here's a mem and here's a hey. And we'll go through these letters. Mem is the mighty waters, the stirred up waters, the chaotic waters. It's the stirring up of water. And then you'll start to get what all the stirring up of the, the pool of Shilawam and all these different things come from. And then there's a hey on the end. So that means to see or behold what comes from. So we're going to see and behold what comes from this mighty water that incubates <clears throat> and forms life in 40 days. Very interesting. Well, what is that? That's the seed. First one's a physical seed, physical intimacy. The second one's spiritual when the spirit leaves our body. And then you have this lakam, <clears throat> lamed, chet, mem. So here's that mighty waters again. And uh, we're going to look at this lakam because that's the root of this. And once you understand the roots, guys, in, in Greek and Hebrew, they never change. Now, this root is translated war, battle. It simply means engagement. And then they add a, a mem and a hay on it. So let's go look at this from Lakam. <clears throat> to devour. Hmm. If you know anything about Hebrew, the letter shin means to consume or devour. It's actually a picture of a tooth. It's talking about devouring and consuming the covenant of love, feeding on it, which brings life. You're eating the bread of life, which is really metaphors for intimacy, guys. So anyway, to fight, do battle. Uh, okay, this that's Strong's 3898. But look at this. What in other places, what it means, the order of battle, it means to fit close together. It means to unite. Then they get all the negative stuff in there too, but fit close together or unite. <clears throat> and if you really look at it, here's the Lamed, Lamed. Um, this is the rod or the staff. Um, and this is the the new life. It's the eighth letter in Hebrew, which is always a picture of new life or new beginnings from this mighty water. So you will get a new beginning from the, the mighty waters of the rod. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> That's feeding on a love covenant, which produces the yod or the seed. It's not talking about devouring enemies, guys. <clears throat> and I'll show you this. Now watch. So this is the verb. This it means to, to devour or consume food. Let's go look at the noun. It's the exact same letters. Lamed, ket, mem. <clears throat> All right. And we'll get 3898A, 3898B. All right. Oops. I hit the wrong thing. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. 3899, <clears throat> the exact same letters. Lamed, chet, mem. It means bread or food. The verb means to devour. This noun, the noun is bread or food. It's the covenant meal, guys. I promise you, it's the covenant meal. The bread or food. And if you go down to the very end, it's show bread, guys. Have you ever seen that in scripture? To eat the food, the fruit, the life, the meat, the victuals, <clears throat> the food. And so anyway, when you're battling or warring, it's eating this show bread, this eat, this food. It's about communion, guys. It's to unite together and fit together in love covenant is actually what it says. So um, that's the root that they translated war in all of these, in all of these uh, verses. So let's go to the first one. Let's go to the first one is, is uh, um, to war. Is in Genesis 14, 2. Okay. So if we go here, Genesis 14, and then uh, we'll just, we'll read it. We'll read it in English first. And it's talking about the kings, and all these kings have meanings, I promise you. <clears throat> so, but we're going to go to verse two. And the, the title king of Goyim went to war. This is the first time war is mentioned. Went to war against Barah, king of Sodom. Um, and we think that's really bad. I'll show you. It's actually uniting together in the final covenant of love. So let's go to interlinear in verse two. All right. 
And so Hebrew, again, <clears throat> um, reads from right to left. So they made, or something is accomplished. And here's ayin, shin, uh, um, hey. So hey means to behold. Ayin, you see, you'll see or experience the shin, the sheen, the consummation, the tooth in Hebrew. And I'll show you this. Uh, uh, just to, It's where we get El Shaddai, guys, the all-consuming fire. So this, this shin is a tooth, press, destroy, separate, except it means consume. Devour means it consume the covenant. We've interpreted it in Strong's and as devouring God. No, God, God loves. <laughs> Sorry. And so you shall see this, this feeding on the covenant and behold what comes from it. This, this is what is accomplished. War. <clears throat> so here you've got what I just went through. Lakam is in the middle. It means the mighty waters of feeding on the covenant, lacham, that you shall behold. So this is a what is accomplished. Something will be fashioned or made, <clears throat> and you will behold what comes from the mighty waters of feeding on this covenant, of consuming this covenant, lacham. And mem, what is mem? This, this Hebrew letter right there. I'm showing you this, but I'm going to show you again because I really want people to get this. <clears throat> so mem is water, chaos, blood. Now blood, as I've shown you, is, is the Hebrew word dam, delet mem. This So it's delet, and this letter is blood. Now, we've been taught over and over and over and over and over is God can only forgive by the shedding of blood. Um, weird way for love to have to forgive. Well, you and I have enough sense that we would love people and forgive, but somehow God's too holy and can't. I know all the reasons, guys, all your... Um, I'm telling you, that's not what it says. Blood is, and I'll show you why, because this number 40 in Hebrew, <clears throat> I'll show you a couple of places. Um, here's, uh, here, you can go do, look up pictographs in Hebrew, like I said, um, 40, the mighty, the water, the mighty, the massive, the many, the chaos. It's like the stirred up waters, the, the turbulent waves um, come from the water, like down the stream. And then let's go see what how Hebrews look at it. It's number 40. That's why you see 40 days, 40 nights, rain, water. Um, you know, if you just go look at it, the letter Mem today, Hebrew today, the letter Mem, numerical value of 40 is, is, is 40. The number, number represents rightness and maturity. This is because in Jewish tradition, 40 days after conception, the fetus begins to take form. Well, that's what Mem means to them, if you go look at this, right? So... <clears throat> this is this letter is connected to the element of water. That's why it looks like a wave, actually. The numerical value of the letter mem is 40. The number represents ripeness, maturity. This is all about new life of the seed being burst open to form new life. This is because, according to Jewish tradition, 40 days after conception, a fetus begins to take on human form. It's on Hebrew today. Um, uh, uh, let's see, or you can go the the mikvah, um, 40 in the mikvah. The embryo takes 40 days to attain recognizable human form. And it says, it's still, it's the mem derives its name from mayim, the Hebrew word for water. And this is the turbulent water, the stirred up water of intimacy, guys. And so at another concept we find associated with water is that of the womb, ripeness, exactly what I just said in Hebrew today. It's the womb is closed during the pregnancy. And uh, uh, again, it takes 40 days for the, from conception where the new life starts to take form and form an embryo. 40 is very important to them. I can de delete that. So um, if we go back to that, so this is the water. You shall behold what comes from some water by feeding, consuming the covenant of bread, feeding on the covenant meal. Well, that's pretty good. And then you've got a left toff. Interesting. It's not translated 11,050 times. <laughs> a left toff. That's, that's Strong's 853. Here they do 854, denoting proximity. Well, how do they know it's the exact same? They don't translate um, 11,050 times. All this is pretty close, denoting proximity, because it means to unite together, uh, to fit together in a love covenant. So is the strength of the ox is in the finished work of the covenant, the toff. <clears throat> so, bara, 
Now, this is really interesting too. Bara, bara. Now, it's used one time and they go, this is the bara, the king of Sodom. No, sorry. No, there's no capitals in there. This That's just what, how they interpreted it. So let's go look. Bet resh, bar, which we translate as sun and ayin. So let me just show you this. This kind of like backwards. Why is the number 70? It means the eye watcher you shall experience, right? And bet is the house. You're the tabernacle of God, the house guys, right? And resh is, is the head, the authority, the highest part of the house, the maleness, the 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 strength of the house. All right. But what this is kind of interesting. So if you go look up, um, let me just do this here. Hebrew word bar. So you can see how simple this actually is if you want to go do it. <clears throat> bar, bet resh, bar. The origin is an Aramaic word corresponding to ben. So let's go look at that. So bet, the house, noon, they call it sun. All right. Where we get the word, the flinging of stones is Eben, which they put a uh, a left on there, which means the strength of the ox is in the the seed which comes from the house. So look at this. This is a noon when on the end it looks like a straight line in in uh, cursive Hebrew. Let's go see what noon means. All right, noon is the number fifty. Seed, the fish, the life, the continuance. Sounds like eternal life. Lily is the swimmer. I joke about it, but it looks like a seed, a sperm, right? It's noon. Um, if you go look here too, I'm just showing you different references. Noon, a fish to sprout, the offspring, the descendant, the action, the heir to the throne, faithfulness. These are these are pretty important. So what it, what it literally says is <clears throat> um, the bar is right here. It's the seed or the life that comes from the house that you shall see and experience. I in. King of Sodom. Okay, sure, I guess. That's not what it means, but that's how they translated it. All right. So let's go look at King Malek, and then we'll deal with Sodom. Okay, Malek. King. All right. You got Mem, Lamed, Kof. Kof means to bless or to cover. It means to cover in intimacy, to bless. It's a picture of a palm of a hand, actually. And if you go look at it, it's, it's really an interesting word. It says it takes the potential in the spiritual realm to create it into the physical realm. So the blessing takes the, a spiritual concept and brings it into reality. So, and you've got <clears throat> Mem, the mighty, it's number 40, the mighty waters that are ripe and give birth from the rod of the blessing. That's the king. That's the Malek, guys. That's the king. This is, this is usual experience, the life that comes from the king of kings, every human being. <laughs> because in the, the whole idea was, Kings declare things because they're in authority. So the, the the final shout, the shout of the trumpet, the blast of the king, the word of the king that went out is literally talking about intimacy, guys, I'm telling you. So the first one's physical. When the mighty waters uh, come out, the it's decreed. There's a shout. There's a trumpet blast. It was all... It was all metaphors for intimacy of something coming out of the doorway of man, which we'll show you here in this next word. And one was physical out of the male part, the erection of the male. The other part is spiritual, guys, for every human being. The king of kings, the king king, uh, is the last trumpet that shouts. It's the last covenant it, that shall that uh, the seed released. And what is it talking about? It literally is talking about the, the spirit that releases the pay, this is why it goes Saul to Paul, <clears throat> pay is the word or or the mouth, the opening of the, the head is literally what it says. There's something that comes out, the declaration of God, of the last covenant, and it literally is the spirit releases, and what's the sign of the covenant? Our body shaloms and rests. It's the shout of victory of all victories, guys. So you shall experience the seed <clears throat> That, that comes from the house of the king, you and I, Saddam. Now, we get all these bad words, Saddam Hussein, and all these different things. It doesn't mean that. So let's go look at this. Saddam. <clears throat> all right. A Canaanite city. Uh, that's the best you can do. <laughs> that's not what it means. The root meaning to scorch, to fire. 
<clears throat> to burn. <clears throat> this is the, the passion, the fire. Fire in scripture, guys, is always purifying, even in Revelation. The purifying fire. And if you go look it up, it's literally the glistening crown that's re released from the head of the man. <laughs> it's the golden. Uh, if you go look up gold, which we'll do, I think uh, um, we'll we'll look look up gold in the next one. This literally is the 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 glistening in the anointing of oil of the fire of man, the passion of man. It's the completion of intimacy, guys. So here you've got <clears throat> Semek. So it looks. So let's go look at Semek in Hebrew. Semek to support, prop up, assist. Uh, it's the propping up of a plant. Does that sound like a stick or the, the firmness of something? You're propping something up, keeping it up. You're hope, holding up a plant. <clears throat> oop, 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 oop. My bad. So, and then you've got <clears throat> this Dilet Mem, Dam. Now watch this, guys. Hebrew word, blood. Here you've got Dilet Mem. <clears throat> now we see lots of blood, guys, but it's not warring and bloodshed, I promise you, like I said. And uh, if you go, let's just go look at this. We've already looked at Mem. Mem is the mighty waters that, that give life, that incubate, that form a uh, embryo, new life, it's brightness, it's maturity. And Dilet is a doorway. <clears throat> if you go look at Dilet, it's the fourth letter in Hebrew, a door, a path of the way of life, the movement into and out of life. So it literally is the picture of that, a door of a house, of a, an overhang in Hebrew. <clears throat> you go look at here again, another one, door to move or the entrance. So it is the mighty waters that incubate and give birth or produce fruit and ripeness that moves in and out of the doorway of the house, you and I, the tabernacle. Well, that is not cutting your finger um, and shedding red blood cells. That is not it, guys. That When you shed red blood cells and hemoglobin, how we've interpreted blood because that was what was passed down to us versus what the original pictographs say, we get an entirely different meaning. One gives life. The seed or the semen, which is blood, that, <clears throat> that props up and lifts up a plant from the lifting up of the plant. That's the end of intimacy. I've been trying to show people. That's what it says over and over and over and over and over. <clears throat> anyway, so we'll 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 show you that. Um, no, I, I think I'll do one more, and then uh, just um, you you'll you, you can start to get it. The warring guys is not to battle. It means to unite, to fit together in covenant, and feed on the covenant. And you shall behold what comes from the mighty waters that come from feeding on the covenant meal to consume or devour the tooth, the shin in Hebrew, the El Shaddai, the God of all gods. And it's, it's talking about consuming the fire of the covenant, the meal of the covenant. Well, that's always the consummation, consuming, devour, to consume the covenant, the consummation of the covenant is what it is, guys. So to feed on this bread, which gives life, you should behold the waters that come from consuming this covenant of 40. Uh, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> How about Ecclesiastes 3.8? The birds actually wrote the, the famous song, Turn, on that. There is a season, turn. And they get it from this. Uh, Ecclesiastes. But you can go through all of the old verses, guys. And when you really dig down, it'll say, this is not talking about the end of the world. This is talking about the end of life. When we lay down this physical flesh, we will consume the the, the blood of the king. The We can, we shall consume the, the covenant meal and the blood of the king is released from our body, which is the seed of the spirit, which is released. And what do we do? We shalom. That is the shin. That's the rest. We've consumed the covenant. <clears throat> All right. So that's, there's a, to everything, there's a season. And if we get to the famous verse, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. All right. So time et. So instead of a left top, we, we get this I in. You shall see or experience the covenant of love. <clears throat> Lahob, 
So if you go look at this, <clears throat> Ahab. So here you've got Ab, a left bet on the end, and then you've got a, hey, you shall behold the love of the Father. That's love right there. Okay? So you shall experience the covenant and the love of the Father. And <clears throat> the and this is the connectedness, the maleness, the vav, that you shall come to experience of the covenant of hate. Hmm. Let's go look at this a little bit. Because <clears throat> does love hate? No, it doesn't at all. So here you've got Shana. So here you've got to consuming <clears throat> the strength of the ox and the seed that comes from it. Well, that doesn't sound like hate, does it? And then we see it coming out of the gates. Uh, this is all about intimacy, I promise you guys. It's not a foe, how the enemy and all these different things. It's the one across from you. You, uh, The other one is really what it's talking about. So <clears throat> this is not hating, guys. Is This is the consuming the shin, the picture of the tooth, of the strength of the ox, the seed, consuming the, 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 the shin, feeding on this seed, which sprouts and brings new life, number 50, that carries the strength of the ox or God. Because it's talking about this is the time that you should experience the strength of the Father. And the connectedness, this vav of, and then you've got, they, they just put the uh, achab, <clears throat> And then they put a lamed on the front. So this is this is the 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 maleness, or the the vav, the connectedness, the nail that you shall experience of the covenant of the the rod. And then they've got the and then they've got the sane. So this comes out of the rod. And then again, you shall experience or see. It's a picture of an eyeball. This covenant of war. Here's the exact same thing. Here's <clears throat> here's lakam. This is the new life that comes from this mighty waters that incubates of the rod. And that's that's uh, that's bread or to feed on, literally. They've translated as 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 hate to war. Um, and it's not talking about battling, guys. It's talking about feeding on a love covenant. So you shall experience the covenant and the mighty water, what comes from the mighty waters that you shall behold of feeding on the bread of this life, of this intimacy. And this maleness, this connection that you shall come to see or experience of the covenant is when you do this, there's a shalom. There's a rest, guys. Shalom is peace, rest. This is the completeness. This is the soundness. This is your welfare, the shalom. And then it ends with <clears throat> the semek. And semek is the propping up of the plant. There's a propping up of the plant that you shall feel this connectedness and you shall experience this covenant. Then there's a rest. So this time is not a time of war, guys. This this is the end time covenant, guys. The mighty waters that incubate and give life do not come from war. They don't. Death comes from war. <clears throat> um, atrocities come from war. But be, when we continue to, uh, you know, the major religions not taking the original word pictures and thinking the end time battle is a war, we're divinely creative, guys. We create more war. I'm trying to show you it is not that. <clears throat> it is not that. It is we shall behold what comes from the last covenant of intimacy when we feed on this. And that when we lay down our flesh, guys, when we when we uh when we shalom our bodies, when our body shaloms, which is this is the this uh this support and rest, the propping up and then the rest is the this this covenant that we'll experience is the eternal life, the, the spirit that leaves out of us. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <clears throat> and we'll we'll cover uh, some of the New Testament verses in the next message. But like I said before, um, hopefully I've shown you that all the warring scriptures um, is not God going to war. It's, it's uniting together and fitting together in the last covenant. <clears throat> and the, the word for war, lacham, means to unite together, the gathering together, the consummation and feeding on the last covenant, which brings eternal life. <clears throat>